Hello everybody, and welcome back to Stately Vaughn Manor. Today, we're going to be talking about the foundations of science fiction. I was going to do another top 10 list like I did last time with the classic horror. I was going to do the classic science fiction uh, top 10 list, but I decided uh, maybe this isn't the time. Science fiction is an awful big subject. I thought I would do kind of an introduction uh, to, to science fiction. Uh, starting with the cla the real classics, the foundations upon which other science fiction has been built. Uh, I don't. I think the newest thing that that's in here uh, are the fifties. Uh, most a lot older than that. So I do I delve down into the vault. Um, see here at Stately Vaughn Manor, below the cellars lies the vault of ancient science fiction. Now the origins of this vault are unknown, but there are chamber after chamber of moldering pulp paper containing classic works of science fiction and an awful lot of not so classic works of science fiction. But there's a lot of science fiction down there, believe me, and the whole place is presided over by mysterious robotic guardians. I don't know where they came from, but they're down there. And you have to be real caref careful when you're down there so they don't see you. But I braved the vault. I braved it for you so that I could bring up these classics of science fiction. Uh, I've got a few authors here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, each one, a little bit about uh, the books, not too much about the books themselves, uh, but but hopefully I'll, I'll give you an idea of why uh, these works are so foundational. So, let's get started. Now I'm going to start at the very beginning, well not the very beginning, but a beginning. I'm going to start with Jules Verne. Uh, Jules Verne, the famous French writer, wrote a series of novels called The Extraordinary Adventures, I believe. And we're pretty familiar with a lot of them. Many of them are real hard to get. He wrote a lot of books. Um, but in English, um, it can be hard to get most of them. There are like four or five that you see all the time that you can get pretty easily. And those are really good ones. So, you know, it's not bad that we have those. Uh, the first uh, book I want to talk about is Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's exactly what it says it is. It's about an adventure, a journey to the center of the earth. Um, there have been a few inner world novels. Uh, the inner world idea has been around. There are people that believe the inner world is real. It's not. But this is an early version of that. Uh, it is an extraordinary adventure. I highly recommend it. It's really good. But it pales next to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is a really good edition, by the way. This is a the Penguin edition. This comes uh, in paperback as well. And this is the almost perfect adventure story uh, for me. And Jules Verne was really interested in technology and vehicles especially. And uh, those come together with his sense of adventure in here uh, with the story of uh, some adventurers who are captured by the mysterious uh, Captain Nemo uh, in his submarine, the Nautilus. Uh, it's pure magic. This is great. It's one of my very favorite books. Um, and so it is an, an early example of an extraordinary journey, uh, not in space, but under the sea. And it is wonderful. Uh, I love Captain Nemo. He's a great character, very mysterious. We, 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 we don't learn enough about him in this book. We do learn a little bit later uh, in another book uh, about him, but uh, excellent. So check out Jules Verne. He should be your first stop for the foundations of science fiction. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the father of science fiction. I'm speaking of H.G. Wells. He wrote a series of, uh, uh, science fiction novels, uh, at least eight of them that I can think of off the top of my head. 
Uh, but the ones you would probably want to start with uh, would be The Time Machine. That was his first major story, uh, more of a novella, really. And uh, The War of the Worlds. Everybody knows The War of the Worlds, at least I hope you do. It's the first major alien invasion story. I just happened to find in the vault a copy of two of these together. Uh, this is The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds. And both great books. Uh, the concept of time travel was explored for the first time, really, I think, in a science fiction type story. And that's not all in The Time Machine. You also have um, a great... Uh, lost world kind of story uh, in the future. Uh, so it's kind of a, a, a precursor to um, otherworldly adventures. Uh, so you have this time traveler who ends up in the future and he sees the, uh, the e meets the Eloy, uh, the gentle future humans and the disgusting, horrific Morlocks. Uh, and it's, it's a great story and the War of the Worlds it's just a fantastic alien invasion story. Uh, H.G. Wells was pondering, you know, this is the time of the British Empire when they were, you know, marching all over everybody. And H.G. Uh, Wells was pondering, well, geez, what would happen if someone did that to us? And so he made it happen in his story. And his Martians are terrifying. And you've got uh, the tripod war machines with their vicious... Uh, heat Ray. And it's great. It's great stuff. Very entertaining. Uh, so your first stop on H.G. Wells should be these two books. Absolutely foundational masterpieces. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to uh, go to America and uh, pick up uh, an early work of scientific romance uh, or interplanetary uh, romance, which would be A Princess of Mars. Uh, this is the first John Carter novel. I kind of would include the second and third John Carter novels because they form a pretty good trilogy. Uh, so Princess of Mars, Gods of Mars, and the Warlord of Mars. John Carter is transported to the planet Mars uh, meet some fascinating uh, aliens, and uh, through the skill of his fighting ability, uh, makes his way uh, to the top of that civilization. Lots of, uh, lots of daring do, lots of adventure. Uh, famously, Star Wars was inspired uh, by this, well, through Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon was kind of a ripoff of John Carter. And... Uh, so that kind of interplanetary uh, romance has uh, kept on. And it's great fun. Uh, not perfect by any means. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, probably nobody's, uh, nobody's a candidate for greatest writer ever, but entertaining. And he understood, uh, he understood how to write a story, man. He really did. Um, so it's entertaining stuff. And... And really, it's been incredibly influential. Uh, if, if you see uh, the stories that came after and how much they owe to uh, A Princess of Mars. So now let's, now let's go a little bit later and let's uh, go to our friend Isaac Asimov and the Foundation series. You can't do a foundational video about science fiction and not mention the Foundation series. Uh, this is the trilogy later on he expanded it uh but the the trilogy is great stuff all on its own uh about about uh the genius selden and his psycho history uh and it's basically about a guy uh who came up with a concept an idea a way of predicting the future mathematically uh by uh, finding a way that people People always behave in certain ways, basically. And uh, he, he was able to use that and create a science uh, that enabled him to figure out what is going to happen in the future. And he lived in the galactic empire in the future. 
and he saw that the Galactic Empire was going to fall. Uh, and so he established a foundation uh, in the hopes that it would minimize the damage. And uh, basically, the first book is a series of novelettes uh, that were published in science fiction magazines. Um, you're going to read the first of the trilogy and go, are, no, are, there, no, are there no women in the future? Um, they, there are, apparently, but it takes a long time for them to show up, man. They don't show up, really, until the second or third book. I think there's, like, one female character in the first book. Odd. In old science fiction, you encounter strangeness like that. Uh, so definitely check out the Foundation's trilogy. Um, it's all worth reading, the whole thing. Uh, I would even say that the books that he wrote later, uh, probably while not as good, uh, still worth reading. And I also want to mention his robot books. Um, we'll start off with the short stories. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of it that I pulled from the vault down there. Uh, I've got iRobot here. If you want to go for the whole thing, you can get the complete robot. And of course, he made uh, he wrote a series of uh, robot novels, uh, beginning with The Caves of Steel. And those are great. Um, so definitely check out Isaac Asimov. How much time we got? We got we're at eleven minutes. We got a couple minutes here uh, to throw in a couple more. Um, you will also often hear Arthur C. Clarke mentioned. Uh, he is another uh, foundational figure of science fiction. In my opinion, he's probably not the greatest writer in the world. Um, his 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 writing. It's serviceable, uh, but he had great ideas, and he had some great ideas. He famously did 2001 A Space Odyssey. Uh, I'm not going to uh, throw that one up because you, it's pretty close to the movie. It was, it was written at the same time as the movie was. Um, but he, here's a couple that you should check out. Um, here's Rendezvous with Rama about a strange, mysterious interstellar spaceship uh, that is found by, by astronauts. My copy... I don't know. It looks like it's been kicked around for years and years. Uh, but this is an excellent, an excellent book. And also um, another one, Childhood's End. So for Arthur C. Clarke, check out these. He also did a lot of really good short stories. Uh, some of his short stories were probably better than his novels. So go find those. Probably should, should mention uh, Robert Heinlein. Um, I couldn't find my copy of Stranger in a Strange Land. I know what happened to it. Uh, it, was, it was stolen by the Phantom. Um, somewhere here in the dark halls of Von Manimer lurks the Phantom. The Phantom of the Library. And he'll come out at night and he'll steal my books and he'll put them in strange places where I would never put them. And he puts them there. And I find them later. I know it's you, Phantom. It's, it's the Phantom. Um, so he obviously took my copy of Stranger in a Strange Land. Uh, and, but he did leave me uh, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and uh, Starship Troopers, which I forgot to bring into the room. Any of those uh, are, are great uh, to check out Robert Heinlein. Um, Interesting guy. I think he was kind of a right-wing guy. I'm only judging by the text of his books. I really don't know too much about him personally. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, but great books. All worth reading. And, and definitely influenced uh, many of the science fiction books that came to follow. Uh, let's talk about A Little End of the World. A lot of great End of the World books. Um, one of my favorites, and one that I think has had an awful lot of influence on all sorts of things. I mean, everything from, God, The Walking Dead to all kinds of other things, uh, is The Day of the Triffids. Thought I was going to say I Am Legend, didn't you? That's another great book. I'm going to talk about that at length one day. But today I'm talking about The Day of the Triffids. Uh, this is great. It was. It's about... Two weird, unconnected things that combined to create a catastrophe. 
Uh, one is the manipulation of plants. They, the triffids are these giant uh, plants that have been uh, genetically modified to be kind of huge monster plants. And in an event, uh, an astronomical event, that if you looked up and you saw it, you went blind. And so a heck of a lot of people went blind. And those two things combined in a very strange way, and you have to read the book to find out how, uh, to create a catastrophe. And it pretty much brought in the end of civiliz civilization as we know it. C civilization would have to be rebuilt. Um, it's that kind of stuff. And this is so good. It's just such a riveting read. Definitely check out this book. Check it out. Um, I don't want to leave you without pointing out that short stories uh, were super, super important in the foundation of science fiction. Um, you have a lot of choices to find those short stories. I would go with this particular book. I think there's mostly it only goes up to the 50s. I think there's maybe one story from the 60s in here. But the science fiction hall of fame if you can get your hands on this the first volume of that you'll see what i mean you'll see some great foundational science fiction stories from the early days so yeah that's my video i have a bunch of other videos planned thank you guys for watching i'm going to uh head back down into the vault sometime soon uh there's a bunch of treasures down there uh like this one look at that 35 cents of awesomeness, possible worlds. Are there alien worlds in this book? Possibly. So I'm gonna go back down into the vault and I'm just gonna pull out a bunch of treasures and show them to you. And so I'll do that sometime soon. I'm also going to be doing a series of videos on authors. I'm going to be doing a Robert E. Howard video. I'm gonna be doing Clark Ashton Smith. I'm going to be doing William Hope Hodgson. I'm going to be doing Carl Edward Wagner. I'm going to be doing all kinds of videos about my favorite authors. So there you go. Thanks for watching me once again. Uh, I hope uh, that you will join me again in the future in my future videos. All right, you guys have a great night. Oh. And for you guys that are stuck in Texas right now and in other places where you're just getting hammered by a storm, I'm with you. I'm thinking of you, man. Good luck. Stay strong, guys. Okay, bye.